So let's talk a little bit about our learning process. Learning today is going to begin with the what and the why, and the why is extremely important. We will not only discuss what things we see for each disordered area or what treatment techniques could be used for treating that area of need, but we will also talk about those signs and symptoms that can occur and why they are related to the specific deficit that we're talking about. We will also identify when one therapy technique may be more beneficial than another one. The importance of therapy really is to determine the reason behind why a deficit is occurring and then why we would choose a specific therapy technique in order to target that deficit. Let's take a look at Titus again. And in this video demonstration, I'm having him practice doing some biting on a super chew. And I want you to watch where I position the tool and what I'm having him do and how I progress to different parts of the mouth. So we'll go ahead and watch Titus here. Okay, that's false. Go, one. Oh, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. One, two, three. Oh, good job. This side. Oh, oh you gotta bite it. One, two, three, four. Do it again. One, two, three, and again. One, Titus, Titus. One, two. <laughs> Ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Ready, oh, let's get the front. Ready, set. No, 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 no chewing. No chewing. Okay, and ready, set, go. And I should probably also make a point with this kind of technique. We would definitely would not want to use it with a child who is in transition of losing teeth. We're going to end up pulling lots of teeth out of the child's mouth. So we have to be very careful of where they are with their baby teeth and then their permanent teeth. So just to keep that in mind. So what did you notice about Titus's biting strength on the tool? And I think the first thing that you saw is he definitely has a preference for biting on the sides of the mouth. He didn't really prefer when I went to the front. He was turning his head to try to get it to the side. All in all, his bite strength is on the shorter side. It definitely is much longer on the sides of his mouth versus an anterior bite. So that's the difference that we saw there. And... I added that little bit of a wiggle into the frontal bite to give him some additional sensory input in order to bring his teeth together to actually grab onto the tool, which is going to lead us here into our next video segment with him. So when I added that wiggle to the tool, it made me think, aha, I can give him extra sensory stimulation and he might actually have a better response. So I'm going to try a different kind of activity with him, and we'll see what he does with his anterior biting this time. Set. Go. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. And get it, get it, get it, get it. Titus. No, oh, hands out. Hands out, buddy. Okay, you ready? Ready. Ready, ready, ready. Get it, 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 get it. So what did you notice about the use of vibration with Titus's frontal bite? I think we definitely saw an increase in the biting duration. And it's amazing what a little bit of sensory stimulation did to his bite. It was just changing from a chewing tool to a Z-Vibe with vibration. And we got a significant change in his biting. All right, we're going to take a look back at Melissa here. And I am using a technique of you doing lip pulls with her. As we saw in the signs and symptoms section, 
we discuss that she has pretty retracted lip positioning and it's not super functional for how she's eating and you could even see in that previous video with her speech she doesn't have great lip closure for bilabial sounds so let's take a look at melissa with doing some lip stretches low no big round lips there you go stretch them out good do it again good do it again good up here do it again good keep going and one more good okay now can you hold your lips together and do a big breath through your nose good keep breathing through your nose good two more and one more time good Let's do a recap of this first video of Melissa we'll look at. And you notice when I was doing the lip pulls, I was doing having her do some relaxation techniques with it. So the first thought is, why did I have her do that? And if you noticed on the first lip pull or lip stretch that I did with her, I didn't get great elongation of the lip muscles. So by adding that extra piece of having her exhale through her mouth in a forward blowing motion, I was able to get some better relaxation in her lip tissue so that she actually could benefit from the stretch that was being used. And as you could see, she, after those full few pulls that I did she actually had a slightly improved lip position it was more relaxed it looked a little bit more natural so after we would do this technique then we would want to ask ourselves what would we be looking for after implementation of this exercise obviously we would like to see a better lip position position at rest more functional lip movements with feeding obviously and if you could see at the end of that video segment where I cued her to close her lips, that still was a very difficult activity for her. Her lip closure looked a little forced, and when she was having to breathe through her nose, the breathing actually looked very forced as well because that's not a natural breathing position for her. And then we also have to keep in mind what part of her history that we discussed earlier could neg negatively impact her progress in therapy. And some of her diagnoses could have an impact with how far she's going to go with having functional lip closure. Her diagnosis of cerebral palsy obviously dings to us that we could have internal tightness just related to that diagnosis uh, with neurological impairment. Her history of asthma, we already have a situation where she has some breathing difficulties, so maybe she's been forced to breathe through her mouth in order to get enough oxygen in. And she also has a diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea. And even though she has had a tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy, she is so much in the habit of mouth breathing that it's been difficult to overcome. All right, let's do an application activity on tongue lateralization. So we have a two-year-old coming in for a feeding evaluation because his mother doesn't feel like he chews solid foods well. During your assessment, you observe the boy taking a bite of pasta into his mouth and suckling on it before he swallows it. You are unable to see what the food looks like before the child swallows it because his lips are closed. The child produces a gag upon swallowing. So based on this scenario, what is the most concerning part? And I'll give you about 30 seconds to look over the choices, and then we'll talk about the answer. Let's take a look back at Micah again, doing his therapy. 
what you're going to see me doing with him in this video is I'm going to be doing some tapping on the sides of his tongue and I'd like you to take a really good look at what his tongue is doing while I'm providing the tapping. Um, he generally needs a lot of encouragement to do exercises, so I apologize. I'm singing a lot in this video. I don't have the best voice, but um, it gets him working with me, so we do what we need to do. All right, here's Micah. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose head shoulders knees and toes knees and toes head shoulders knees and toes knees and toes head shoulders knees and toes knees and toes eyes and ears and mouth and nose head shoulders knees and toes knees and toes Woo! yay I'm bringing home my baby bumblebee. No, you're saying no. All right, so how did Micah's tongue respond to the tapping on the sides? And I think we would probably all agree that we started to see some tongue tip differentiation with the lateral tapping and actually it looked like he was producing some cupping. Very early in the video segment, when I first started tapping, there was a slight sweep of the tongue to the left side and the tongue tip did some curling. So I was starting to get a response from the exercises that I was doing. So that's what I was looking for to see if the tongue tip would actually do something different than just be in a very neutral and flaccid state, for lack of a better word.